Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about light painting, which is a very fun, creative way to do some photography. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, as you can see, Halloween is coming up. We've got some fun stuff going on. We'll probably do some actual full on proper Halloween content because it's a little bit early now. But I wanted to talk to you about light painting, which is a very fun, creative kind of thing you can do with your photography. Now we're gonna go through a full example that I'm actually shooting right here on this desk with this pumpkin, mainly because it's actually raining outside. <laughs> the techniques in this video can be applied to all kinds of different ways of making this happen. You can do it outside, you can do it inside, you can use different kinds of lights, different kinds of colors, and, and essentially the techniques that we're gonna do here today carry over to all of that. So it's just about being creative and your imagination as to what you can actually achieve with it. So first things first, what exactly is light painting? Well, to me, there's two types of light painting when it comes to photography. There's the type we're gonna do today, which is essentially where we draw or paint with lights using a long exposure, so sh keeping our shutter open while we take the photo for five, 10 seconds, something like that, and paint with lights in the scene to leave a light trail. And then there's the second type of light painting, which is not what we're gonna cover today, but if you wanna see a tutorial on that, we can certainly do that as well, which is this kind of light painting. So uh, at night, I mean, this was taken, this is one exposure, this isn't multiple shots put together, this is one exposure where I've got the night sky behind, uh, and then I've got my subject sitting, kind of looking out at it, and I've actually used a light while the shutter is open and exposing to just kind of paint over them, to brighten them up a little bit, but without leaving the light on them the whole time to actually kind of overexpose them. But that's, that's a different kind of light painting that we're not gonna get into in this video. This is the one we're gonna be talking about today, where we paint fun lines with light around our subject and, and stuff like that. So let's get into exactly how we do that. Now, first of all, I set up the pumpkin exactly like this. So I've, I've carved, well, I didn't carve it, if I'm honest. I got Matilda to carve it, who you may recognize from a bunch of videos. <laughs> she carved the pumpkin, did a really great job. We put a light inside, we were gonna use a candle, but in the end, we ended up using an LED light, and I think it looks good. I set up the lights behind, so they're kind of a, also a, a pumpkin-y, orangey sort of color, so that we've just got our general setup here. Now, I didn't put any additional lighting on the pumpkin in this situation. That is something that you could experiment with, but you just wanna be careful that you're not adding too much light to the scene. And the reason for that is we're gonna be leaving our shutter open for anywhere between sort of two and a half seconds up to about 10 seconds. So the more light you have in the scene, the more you're gonna to have to make things happen, like use an ND filter or, or use a crazy close down aperture to try and restrict the amount of light going into the camera, going onto that sensor. So in an ideal world, we wanna have as little light in the scene as possible because we're gonna be letting so much into our camera. So now that that's set up, we need to set up the camera itself. So obviously it's on a tripod because we're gonna be doing a long exposure, leaving that shutter open means that it needs to be on something steady. It needs to not move at all because we, any camera shake is gonna introduce blur to the image and that's not what we want at all. So the settings that I'm using for these photos, starting out, we're starting at F16. So pretty close down. We're doing ISO 50, just to try and keep it as low as possible. And that allows me to play around with the shutter speed a little bit. So we're starting at two and a half seconds, just to see what it looks like, moving up to five seconds, and we can adjust our settings as we go. So for example, if I move up to five settings, then I might even stop down to something like F22. And I actually managed to get up to 10 seconds without using an ND filter, by using F22 as well. And I've closed all the curtains and turned off all the lights apart from the lights behind the pumpkin. Now, that's not ideal because when you stop down that much, when you close the aperture right down, you start getting something called diffraction and it starts to make the image less sharp. So a better way of doing this would actually be to use an ND filter on the front of the lens. Whether that's variable or whether that's just something like a 10 stop ND, that is gonna massively restrict the amount of light coming in and it's gonna make it easier to keep that shutter open for longer. Now I like to do a couple of test shots 
before I even start light painting at all, just to make sure the exposure is going to look okay, the composition looks all right, and stuff like that. So that's what I go ahead and do. I set the camera to have a two second timer. And that means that when I press the shutter, there's two seconds before it starts actually taking the photo before it opens that shutter, which means I'm not introducing any shake by actually pressing that shutter. It also means it gives me two seconds in this situation to get into position to begin light painting for when the actual camera starts taking the photo. Now, of course, if you're further away from the camera, you might want to do a 10 second timer or something like that, but I find the timer very, very helpful for this kind of stuff, especially if you're doing it by yourself. So we've got the camera set up, we've got the pumpkin set up. Now we need to actually start with our light painting. Now there's loads of different ways that we can do this. It's easier because we're using a still life subject. So we've just got a pumpkin. Nothing's going to be moving in the frame. If you want to do this with a person in the frame, it's a little bit trickier and generally you're going to want to use a slightly shorter shutter speed. So maybe I'd say two and a half seconds is about the most I've ever gotten away with. Unless you're incredibly good at staying perfectly still, that's probably going to be about where you can, where you can get to without introducing just general blur to your image. Because with a person, no matter how still you think you are, you are probably moving. You are probably moving just enough that when the actual image is exposed and done, there's gonna be, it's gonna be blurry. It's not gonna be ideal. So two and a half seconds with a person is about as long as I've ever managed. But with something like this, or, you know, any still object at all, five, 10 seconds, it doesn't really matter. Nothing's moving. The only thing that's gonna be moving is the actual lights in the scene. So we've set everything up. We need to get our lights. Now I was using sparklers to actually do this, to actually achieve this effect. But you could use an LED light, you could use a long kind of tube light, it would look amazing because it would leave really kind of long trails behind. Sparklers look very, very nice because they give off little sparks. I mean, big surprise, right? But they give off the sparks and they look awesome, the way they kind of move around. The actual light is very, very nice. And they leave these really nice light trails as you move them around the scene. And I know what you're thinking, if you've never done this kind of thing before, you might be thinking, well, this sounds great. I'm really into it. But how are you not getting yourself in the shot? And that's the beauty of what we're doing here with the long exposure. So I dressed in pretty much all black just to make sure that I wasn't giving off any kind of reflection or unwanted light or anything like that. And that means that as I move through the scene, the camera's not really picking me up. I'm not in one space for long enough and I'm not giving off any light to really actually pick anything up. It'll be getting the light from behind me, which is much stronger than just whatever black clothing I was wearing. And it's obviously getting the light from the sparkler because that's nice and bright. So it's easy to actually get that onto the sensor. But the light that's bouncing off me is just not enough to actually get in there. So as long as I don't stay in one space, as long as I'm standing out of frame and it's just my arm, maybe my shoulder that's getting into the frame, well then it's no problem at all. It's absolutely pretty straightforward to not be in the frame. Now, I would say that this is a little bit of trial and error when it comes to doing a bit of a light painting like this, because you don't know exactly what it's gonna look like until you've taken the photo. So to start with, I just did some pretty basic, light the sparkler, and then just bring it around the pumpkin to create some lines. And a key part to this is that you wanna start just before the actual camera starts taking the photo, and you wanna keep going until the camera's finished taking the photo. You don't wanna, right, camera started, now I'll begin, and then, oh, right, it's about to finish, I'll take my thing away, because that will leave lines from where you go in and then out, and you don't want that. You want the nice circular lines, like in this situation, all around. So you, you essentially start just before the camera starts taking the photo, and you keep going until the camera stops taking the photo. That way you're gonna keep all the lines exactly where they should be. And hopefully what should happen is that your arm is not in the photo at all. I'll pop the actual settings that were used for the images up on the screen so you can see exactly what we did camera-wise. But to be honest, it's a pretty easy technique that you can just do with a little bit of trial and error. So for example, I, I went a bit overboard. I bought 30 sparklers. We didn't need 30. We used about eight just to get the photo that we wanted to get. But you could use sparklers, you can use tube lightings, you can kind of make your own lights. You know, any LED light's gonna be pretty good as well. You know, if it gives off different colors because you can kind of paint different stuff. I've been limited to being inside because it's really 
chucking down with rain, but there's so much you can do outside as well. You want to wait till it's a little bit darker. So for example, if you are going to a forest or if you are going to something like that, which can look amazing, maybe go with a friend just because, you know, the forest at night around Halloween, or oh, do any of us want to be there? But for the light painting, yes, we do. <laughs> It's also probably worth mentioning that it may not be the best idea to use sparklers indoors. These were indoor sparklers, uh, and they also only lasted for about 10 seconds at a time, so I had to be pretty quick lighting them and then going with the camera. But it's probably worth mentioning that that's not necessarily the best idea. But any space that you can get to be relatively dark, you can have some kind of subject, and then you can paint the light around, is gonna look fantastic. And it's all just about how creative can you be and your imagination as to what you can actually make, how you can make this work. Now, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video, any of the kit, anything at all, pop it all down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. That always helps us out. We've got some really nice autumn stuff coming up soon. I've already gone out and shot a bunch of stuff, actually. So there's a bunch of autumn tutorials. We've got autumn photography. We've got autumn editing, stuff like that, all coming up on the channel over the next couple of weeks. So make sure to keep it locked to park cameras for more of that. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.